to do this correctly, we need to start from the beginning. No, not that. We need to go to the early of 20th century, the start of the modern world. So let's talk about what happened in the early 20th century. So World War I was already becoming a ghost in the past in countries like the United States, which were actually going through an economic boom post-war. But this was actually the complete opposite in Germany, sorry, the Weimar Republic, which actually had problems of economic inflation, constant political upheavals, and most importantly, lacked stability. You see, this instability will eventually lead to the rise of the Nazi party and Adolf Hitler in Germany. By 1933, more than tens of thousands of Jews left the country, citing fears of persecution under Hitler. People left Nazi Germany, moving to United States and our European countries. Immigration began to actually slow in the United States due to this. The government chose to limit the number of visas, and this wouldn't be the first time they do this. <clears throat> you see, Jews were being stranded in Nazi Germany, and countries were denied safe passage for refugees, so there needed to be an adamant response. So America's favorite socialist and four-term president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, decided that America needed to respond to this, quote, refugee crisis. So in 1938, America and 38 other countries sent representatives to... I can't even pronounce that. As usual, in the land of politics, nothing got done. There was some discussion about settlement camps, but most of the countries who attended did not even want to accept new immigrants. The only thing that they actually agreed on was having an armed meeting. But something happened one night in November of 1938. On November 9th, 1938, Nazi Minister of Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, bought a gathering of old stormtroopers urging violent reprisals that were staged to appeal as, quote, spontaneous demonstrations. This escalated when Heinrich Mueller, the Spato chief, sent an order that, quote, in the shortest order, actions against Jews, and especially their synagogues, will take place in all of Germany. These are not to be interfered with. In two days and nights, more than a thousand synagogues were burned or otherwise damaged. Rioters ransacked and looted about 7,500 Jewish businesses, killed at least 91 Jews, and vandalized Jewish hospitals, homes, schools, and cemeteries. The attackers were often neighbors. Some 30,000 Jewish males aged 16 to 60 were arrested. To accommodate so many new prisoners, concentration camps located at Dachau and Buchenwald and Schachhausen were expanded. After this event, it was given the eerie name, Crystal Knock, meaning Crystal Night or Night of the Broken Glass. This name symbolized the final shattering of Jewish existence in Germany. And after this event, Many Jews realized that survival in Germany was impossible. The world watched in horror, and a response was needed. Following the events of Kristallnacht, the British Jewish community, delegated to an exclusive group of which white men, sorry, British Parliament to respond. 
This led to a debate in the House of Commons on the 21st of November, 14 days after Chrysostom. The House agreed that a response was needed and decided to permit an unspecified amount of children under the age of 17 to enter the UK. You see, the growth of anti-Jewish atrocities in Europe created a concern among the elite. Around this period of history, those that are rich were able to make the most impact on society. They also believed they also signed a 50 pounds 50 pounds bond for each of these children, believing that they'll eventually reconnect with their parents when this crisis is over, and they're admitted with temporary travel documents. Back in Germany, an network of organizers were created. From there, these volunteers will consistently work around the clock to make a priority list for Jews that are in most peril, teens stranded with deportation, children in Jewish orphanages, children whose parents are too impoverished to even keep them, and children of parents who are sent to concentration camps. Once these children were identified and grouped by list, their guardians or parents were issued a travel date and departure for details. They could only take a small sealed suitcase with no valuables, and only had about 10 marks or less in money. Some children had nothing but a manila tag with a number on the front and her name on the back, while while others simply had while others simply had an identifying card. On December 2nd, three weeks after Crystal Nod, the first group of 196 children arrived in Harwick, England. In the next nine months, more than 10,000 unaccompanied, mostly Jewish children, traveled to England. The operation undertaken by the British government was called Kinder Transport, which is a German word for children's transport. Before World War II started, more than 10,000 children were saved. To those of privilege and power, the operation was seen as success. But many children actually experienced trauma from the event. Some children were sent to homes where they were abused and expected to be servants. And it's important to note that kinder transport also stoked anti-Semitism in Great Britain too. Fears of German invasion actually convinced Parliament to pass the internment of enemy aliens. They believed that refugees were sympathetic to the Nazi cause. The suspected enemies were incarcerated on the Isle of Man or sent to Canada, Australia, and about one tenth of these kinder transport teens were classified as aliens. But the biggest trauma that was at the forefront of all of this was the separation of the parent, the child. The parents explained that their child was going on a trip and a tiny vacation. Another source of major stress was the language barrier. Most of these kids spoke German or Czech, and being forced to set parents or new guardians who barely understood them was extremely difficult. By the time war started, there were a few cases of parents successfully escaping Nazi Germany and reuniting with the children, but unfortunately this only happened a couple of times. Other children had a really good grasp of what was happening across Europe in the Second World War. Many became truly concerned about the safety of their parents. Near the end of the war, they became more aware of the atrocities of the Holocaust, the genocide of six million Jews at the hands of Nazis. They understand the threat of it to their parents and their extended family. By the end of the war, nearly all children learned sooner or later that their parents were murdered. Kinder Transport was a rescue operation to save more than thousands of Jewish children and teens from Nazi Germany. Although successful, many survivors remember the trauma they suffered, dealing with cultural assimilation, abuse, and racism. Since then, survival stories and organizations from refugees have spawned. In 2018, the Claims Conference, an organization that negotiated the German government for financial compensation for victims of the Holocaust, announced that each living survivor will receive around $2,800. Each survivor had their life changed and turned upside down by this event. 
And these are stories that need to be told.